celebrate the first Sunday of Christmas. So I hope you've had a Merry Christmas, and I'll be talking some more about the 12 days of Christmas uh, as we go through our worship today. I am Mert Shane, pastor here at Keoki Chapel, and welcome one and all. It is good to have you with us, uh, and hopefully you are staying safe uh, during this holiday season. Again, we are going to do some different things today than our usual, uh, and so we hope you can join along and enjoy uh, our service today. Let us begin with our call to worship. Christ is born, give him glory. Christ has come down from heaven, receive him. Christ is now on earth, exalt him. O you earth, sing to the Lord. O you nations, praise him in joy, for he has been glorified. Let us pray. O Almighty God, by the birth of your holy child, Jesus, you gave us a great light to dawn on our darkness. Grant that in his light we may see light. Bestow upon us that most excellent Christmas gift of love to all people, so that the likeness of your Son may be formed in us, and that we, may have the ever-brightening hope of everlasting love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For our children's sermon today, I want to bid you Merry Christmas. We have 12 days of Christmas uh, that we celebrate the wonder of the birth of Jesus. It's a busy time for Jesus. Uh, as a baby, recognized that the angels sang to him, uh, that he was told by uh, many of the wondrous things and celebrations. And so the angels told the shepherds, and the shepherds went through town and took in Bethlehem, telling of the birth of Jesus. Also, there were many visitors that came to see him. And in the process, uh, eight days old, his father took him to the temple to be recognized, and naturally the temple was a place of worship, and so he was recognized and given his official name of Jesus. And that's the name that the angels told them to name him. Later on, he, through his time here on earth, he was taken uh, by Mary and Joseph, his parents, to uh, Jerusalem to see, uh, to be blessed. And a faithful man named Simeon uh, was worshiping at the temple there. And when he saw Jesus, Simeon held the baby Jesus in his arms and said, Jesus is the light of to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. And so he blessed him. And so today's worship service focuses on that blessing uh, by Simeon. Simeon was very old at the time and knew that before he died, he would see the wonders of God's love in a child. And so we give thanks today as we continue to celebrate. Christmas is not just one day. We celebrate Christmas for at least 12 days and actually throughout the entire year, uh, recognizing the birth of Jesus. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for each day for this mystery. We ask your blessings upon our children, as they grow and learn about the love of Jesus through his days here on earth and give you thanks always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Merry Christmas. Our gospel lesson today is from Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 
verse 10 through 60, chapter 62, verse 3. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the Sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see their righteousness, and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name, that the mouth of the Lord will be stone. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem, in the hand of your God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, we rejoice that you reveal yourself to those who watch attentively for your promised revelation. We rejoice that you are recognized in unexpected ones, and startling places that by those who have disciplined their eyes to see and their ears to hear. Eternal God, we stand before you at the closing of one year and the dawning of the next, time that we've structured to count and administer, to judge and weigh. How small our world must seem to you how bound by our own perceptions and expectations. God, beyond time, your love exceeds all categories and constraints. Broaden our awareness of your cosmos and our contributions within it. Increase our forbearance toward one another. Ever surprising, God, a new year is upon us, but will we fall prey to old ways? Will we look around or within and see only the same old, same old, in hurts we resist letting go of, in prejudices that weigh us and others down, in memories of slights we cling to in hopes of getting our pound of flesh in return. We confess such sin in our lives. We confess such sin that binds our community to either repeating the follies of days gone by or attempting to relive what is no longer. Forgive us, O oh God, as we start this new year. Grace us with eyes and minds as open and Anna and Simeon to new days dawning and a new one coming. Open us to your ways, even when we would not have been, it would not have been our choices. And bring to us such light as may illuminate your way ahead and such spirit as may give power to proceed upon it. Help us, strengthen us, now and always. We pray for all those who have been stricken with this COVID-19 virus. Bless them and help them in their struggles and recoveries. We pray for our doctors and nurses and essential workers around the world. Help them as they try to help others. We 
pray for traveling mercies for those on the highways and byways. Give them strength and comfort and help them in their decision making. We pray for the sick and shut-ins. Give them your peace and comfort. Give us hope for this new year and help us in our struggles. Help us to stay focused on staying safe and making good decisions. Grant us your peace as you have given us this holy mystery. Help us to truly recognize that it is Christmas and it is a time for love and giving. We pray these and other prayers in your Son Jesus' name, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We take a moment to give thanks for all those that have made contributions. It is uh, a good thing to contribute uh, to our missions and ministry. We give thanks for those that put in offerings that for the end of the year. Uh, it's not too late to contribute. Uh, please send in your offerings. Uh, do it online. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, simply by going to uh, epaumc.org and go to uh, giving. And you will be able to find Kiyoki Chapel there and be able to give your contributions. And for all those that have been contributing, we give thanks, and so we now pray. Holy One, we come before you with gifts that are precious to us, and dedicate them to you and to your work. Receive and bless them, as you receive and bless the gift of Joseph and Mary, that our offerings may be fruitful, as was their gift, bringing peace and justice and your saving works to your creation. Amen. Our Gospel lesson today is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. Hear this story. When the time of their purification occurred in the law of Moses, and the law to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it was written in, in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout, he was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had been, he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought the child Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, 
Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed him and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Philip, and the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of J Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. At this time, I would like to introduce our guest speaker for today. She should be familiar to many of you. She is presently the uh, Director of Connectional Ministries for our Eastern Pennsylvania Conference of the United Methodist Church. But many of you know her from her roots, from her upbringing at Mountain Home United Methodist Church close by, our sister congregation. And so we are blessed and pleased today that Dawn is going to give us a word for our souls, uh, and we give thanks. Immediately after that, there will be uh, some singing of hymns, and so we give God thanks for that. So at this time, I introduce Dawn Taylor Storm, uh, our sister in Christ. My husband, Dan, loves the movies. I'm actually filming from his man cave in the basement. I try to never come down here. But when we were dating, Dan did the strangest thing when we would go to the movie theater. The movie would be over and I would get up to go home and Dan would just remain sitting there to watch the credits. He watched every name as it scrolled across that screen. And I even remember the people were coming in to clean up the popcorn on the floor and we were the only people sitting there in the movies. I think I fell for Dan that day as I saw his expression of gratitude. But one day, there we were in the theater watching the post credits. Everybody else had left, gone home a few minutes earlier, and suddenly there was a scene. There was um, this little vignette that came on. It was a foreshadowing for the next movie in the series, and we were so excited that we had stayed and we had this experience. Now you see these quite a bit. There they're called stingers and comic book movies put them in so if you're in a marvel movie uh, definitely stay for the credits dc has some catching up to do but there are these scenes in the credits that uh, folks will stay and enjoy and um, if you go home you'll miss it this sunday the gospel of luke 
has a scene that we don't want to miss, a stinger that's worth staying for. Now, most folks have gone home. The Christmas trees are out by the roadside. Even virtual attendance has less traction this week. People are done with Christmas. Some people wonder if there was even a Christmas at all this year. But for those of us who have remained, Luke has a story for us, a part of the birth story that we don't want to miss. And this morning, I want to zoom in with you as we see that moment. You see, Simeon, that older man, has been going to the temple day after day. I wonder, as Simeon went to the temple, if people mocked him. I wonder if people said, Simeon, just go home already. It's been 600 years. Give up. The Messiah is not coming. But Simeon would not give up on God. Every day he makes his way to the temple. Every day he shows up. Simeon is one who shows up. I hope in your life you have someone like that. I think those of you who are engaging worship on this Sunday after Christmas, you're the folks who stay, who show up. People who show up are the ones who are delivering groceries right now to their neighbors who are in quarantine. People who show up are the ones that you know you can call up on the phone and they'll listen without judgment. They'll meet you where you are. People who show up know what it is to follow Jesus, the one who shows up for us. And so Simeon showed up at that temple day after day. Simeon refused to give up on God. And here's the thing. God refused to give up on Simeon. Sometimes people feel like they're no longer, that God no longer remembers them. In our society today, ageism is real, and particularly folks who are older feel like the church even has forgotten about them. This past week, I was Zooming with our retired clergy, and I had tears in my eyes as they all gathered together on that screen from all over the United States. Many of them had not seen each other in years and we gave thanks for ministry that continues every day that we have breath. You see, God does not give up on us, and God often uses people that the world has forgotten to show God's salvation. And so this morning, it is Simeon to whom God reveals God's very self. Every day, he goes to that temple. And then one day, friends, one day, they Come, can you picture them? Can you really picture them? They were tired, they were worn out, they were young, oh so young we forget, just teenagers as they made their way that day to the temple for the presentation and the purification. They come, I picture the determination on Mary and Joseph's face that indeed, no matter how weary they are, they will claim their child as God's beloved son. So they make their way there. We not only forget how young they were, but we often forget how poor they were. They bring just that day the birds as an offering. You see, Jesus preached about the injustice of poverty, but he also knew it intimately. Jesus knew what it is to be impoverished. He knew what it is to be immigrant. He knew what it is to be outcast. And Jesus speaks from his experience as he calls us in this world to see those that others do not see. And so they come that day, the Holy Family, and there's a miracle in Simeon's waiting. But friends, there's also a miracle in Simeon's watching. For who would have expected the Messiah to show up that day in the vulnerability of a baby? Who would have expected God to come in this world in one that was powerless? But Simeon sees. Simeon sees God in the unexpected. I pray you and I might have eyes to see. If you want to find Jesus this morning, if you want to find Christmas this morning, go to the margins. Go and find the people that the world has forgotten. 
that day, Simeon saw the salvation of God in a baby. And he takes that baby in his arms and he lifts that baby to God and says, Now, Master, thy servant may be dismissed and depart in peace. Many folks have taken this first Christmas song and they've trivialized it saying, oh, Simeon can now just die in peace. The old man can die. That's not what Simeon is saying. When he says that he can now be dismissed in peace, that word in Greek is like a sentry sitting watch every day, waiting and watching. And finally, finally peace has come, not just for Simeon, but the salvation of the world has come. Simeon knows that in this child, the world is now turned upside down. Simeon knows that in this child, now there is peace. What about you and what about me this Christmas? Can we depart in peace. The pandemic continues to ravage our communities. Racial inequity continues to be a reality, not only in our communities, but in our churches. Polarization, sometimes in our very families, is real. How, in the midst of all of this, can we depart in peace? I want you to remember again the community to whom Luke is writing. You see, that community was a community that knew oppression intimately. Just Google for a minute Emperor Caligula and you will see what it was to live under the tyranny of the most unjust ruler possible. Remember what it was as even factions began to war with one another, the zealots and the Romans plotting. Remember what it is to live in a place where you don't know if you'll be able to find any peace in the streets because there is no peace. You see, the world to which Jesus came, the world to which Jesus born was a world filled with suffering and injustice. People were afraid. Economic ruin was real for these people who lived under an oppressive regime. To this world, Jesus comes. This Christmas has been unlike any you or I have experienced before. Many of us did not gather with our loved ones. For some of us, we are quarantined ourselves. For others, we have family members for whom we are praying vigilantly day and night. How has Christmas come? But friends, in some ways, this Christmas is the most real of all. In some ways, perhaps, We've experienced Christmas for the first time. Christmas isn't about all of the trimmings. Christmas is about God breaking into our mess. Not of us going to God, but of God literally coming to us, moving into our neighborhoods, moving into the pain, moving into the injustice, God showing up. That's what Emmanuel means. And so, like Simeon, we are able to depart in peace. From Simeon, I learn what it means to wait, to trust that God's word is real and that God will show up. Simeon waited day after day. From Simeon, I learned what it means to watch. Simeon watched for God in the unexpected ways. Simeon saw God in the most unlikely of persons, the Messiah coming in the vulnerability of a baby. And from Simeon, I learn wonder. As Simeon lifts that child before God and rejoices that indeed God's joy and wonder have come. That's why this weary world rejoices.
That's why rejoicing is possible even in our weariness, friends. That's why Christmas has come. I still remember sitting in that theater. Obviously, as you can see from behind me, my husband's love of movies continues. Pray for me, friends. But I still remember that moment as everybody else had gone and people were cleaning up the popcorn and there was this unexpected scene, this stinger that came on this morning for those of you who have remained, for those of you who have not given up on God, for those of you who are willing to wait and watch, the wonder comes. And that wonder is one that is meant to be shared with the world. Even those who have gone, for them the wonder has come as well. God has come to us. And like Simeon, because of God's coming, we are able this day to depart in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hey, what are you doing down here? Oh, nothing, nothing. Did I, you touch anything? I didn't touch anything. We hope that you have enjoyed uh, the service, and we pray that you have a healthy and prosperous new year as this year comes to an end. And so, our benediction, before us it is blessed, behind us it is blessed, below us it is blessed, above us it is blessed. Around us it is blessed as we set out with Christ. Our speech is blessed as we set out for God. With beauty before us, with beauty behind us, with beauty below us, with beauty beneath us, above us, with beauty around us, we set out for a holy place indeed. Amen. May God bless you and keep you safe. Be healthy. Be at peace. And know that you are loved by God, both now and always. Amen.